have your uh, username and password. Once you've created an account, then you're going to go over to the websites. You're going to click onto your browser and you're going to go to coursecompass.com. And that'll take you to this page here. So uh, in the previous uh, video where I was talking about the book, they'll talk about how to register, which is this process over here. So you got to watch that video to register. So you go through this registration process, create an account, you'll have a username and password. The rest of that video will answer your questions for that. Okay? But uh, once you already have registered, you only do that once, then you'll have a username and password and then you'll never have to go through that registration process again. So once you have it, you go on to this website, you get to here, and you're going to go to sign in, and then of course you'll have a username and password. So let me type in mine. Okay, the first page it takes you to is uh, sort of a, a collection of all the different courses that you might have already taken with my math lab. So me, I have all these little boxes. Each one of these boxes represents a different, a different class uh, that I've taught in the past uh, or the future. And so for you, you'll only probably only going to have one, which is maybe like this one, right? So we click on there and then it'll take you to the actual content of this course. So it'll save it in that previous one for, for long after this class is over. You can always come back and look at material if you want. So here is the actual page for our course. It automatically takes you to, to this introductory page when you get here. Me personally, I don't really do much with this, uh, but you might have announcements like particularly from the publisher. Maybe if they're doing updates or anything, this would be a good place to pay attention if they're going to be shutting down the website for something. I don't know. So announcements. It also gives you information about uh, uh, assignments that are due and where you know your progress through those assignments and things like that. Okay. So uh, the two important parts about this website for you is the homework and the quizzes. So right underneath here, there's a little tab that says homework. Click on to there, and here are all your homework assignments for the entire semester, starting with chapter one, all the way down, all the way down to chapter 11. So they're all online, available right now for you to get started with them. So uh, you can just click on to any one of them. So say 1.1. Here is a little overview of all the questions. It has a total of 18 questions uh, and each one is worth one point. So as of right now, there's zero out of one for all of them. So then you can click on any one of these to take you to the place where you type in your homework. It doesn't matter. So then a new page will pop up. If it doesn't, then it might have a pop-up blocker. If you have any issues, you can call that 800 number. Okay, so the first chapter has a lot of vocabulary. So there's a lot of uh, fill in the blank kind of things. Uh, so for instance here, blank are the characteristics of individual of the population being studied. So you have to drop down this menu and choose which one it is. Uh, so let's say I think it's variables. I click on variables, I hit check answer, and great. All right, good. So I got a point. So if you look up here right now, I have one out of 18 points is what I've earned so far. If you put this away right now and don't do anything else, then that will be your score, one out of 18, which is 5.56% for this homework assignment. So there's never anything you turn in or anything. It just keeps track of what you're doing um, until it's, you know, the due date passes. Okay. Uh, so let's move on to the next one. Okay. So then the next one's a multiple choice one. So let's say I choose this one. I didn't even read it. I just picked one and oops, I'm wrong. Okay. So it'll give you some information, a little, maybe a hint as to what you should have done. Uh, and then it'll ask me to check it again. So maybe I want to change my answer. Maybe I decide the answer is D. Oh, great. I got it right. I didn't even read it. Okay. So there's that possibility here. That's what I don't like about multiple choice. People could get lucky. Uh, so uh, make sure you uh, read it and uh, pay attention to it because this is just the way for you to prepare for the exam. The bulk of your grade comes from the written in-class exams. 
So don't uh, don't trick yourself into thinking you're doing well just because you got it right. You got to really understand the the material. Uh, okay, so here's another multiple choice one. Let's get to one where I get it wrong. Oh, really? Wow, just get really lucky here. Uh, I don't know. How about B again? Ah, uh, okay, got it wrong. Okay, so a little hint as to what I should have done. Let's say I, I'm stubborn and I stick to B again. And, oh, okay, so now I finally got one wrong. So, sorry, the answer is not correct. It shows you that the correct answer should have been D, and I answered B. So now um, I have a choice here. I can hit similar question. And what it's going to do, it's going to give you the question, a similar question. And so now if you get this one right, uh, let's see, determine whether the underlined uh, value is a parameter or a statistic. Following the election, 18% of the governors of all of the 50 areas of the county were uh, female. Okay, so is that a parameter or a statistic? Does anybody know right now? That's a parameter? Okay, so let's see, that's the value is a parameter because the governors of all 50 counties are a population. Okay, that sounds reasonable. Great, so now I got it right, and then see that red, that red X there showing that you had it wrong the first time? It turns it into a nice green check mark. Let's go back to the previous one. It turns it into a nice green check mark, and that means that you get credit for that. So there is no penalties for having it wrong the first time as long as you eventually got it right. There is an infinite number of attempts as well. So you could just sit there all day and hit, you know, is it C? Wrong. Okay, get a new one. Is it D? Wrong. Get a new one. So you could just sit there all day until you eventually get it right. So like I said, there's sort of like some room for potential abuse. Uh, some people miraculously do great on all their homework and then they have no idea about anything when the test comes. So this is a tool to prepare you for the in-class tests, which are the great bulk of your grade comes from the in-class tests. So give a, an honest effort, a nice attempt, read them, try them out, and uh, hopefully uh, uh, hopefully it's, it's a useful tool to prepare you. Now, they're not all gonna be multiple choice. Uh, there's a variety of questions that you'll have. Okay, well, the first chapter is all vocabulary. So there's a lot, a lot of word problems. Uh, but the, the, the format does change as you move forward. Some of them might be drop-down menus or multiple choice. Some of them are just fill in the blank. There's a little bo a text box there, and you got to type in the answer. Um, sometimes there's something you move around, like a graph or something, and you move it around and show where the correct answer is. Uh, so there's a variety of, of uh, formats that they use to ask you questions. Okay. Uh, so your running score is up here. Uh, and you just got to keep working on it until you get a sufficiently high score uh, as best you can. You can go all the way to 100%. Like I said, there's no penalty for having it wrong the first few times, as long as you eventually get it right. And you'll continue to work on this until the due date. Once the due date comes, uh, comes past due, then you will not be able to work on it anymore, and whatever your score is on there will be frozen, and then that'll be the score that I use to calculate your... Your, your homework percentage of your grade. So to do that, let me leave this here. Let's go back to homework. Okay, so back to this page here. So notice these little flags on here. These little flags on here are letting you know that there's something stopping you from opening it. So right now, if I try to open 1.2, it's gonna stop me and tell me that I'm not allowed to open it yet. There's a prerequisite. The prerequisite is that you have to complete the prior homework assignment with a minimum of 50%. So at least, at least half of the previous homework assignment before you can move on to the next one. That's inside each chapter. The beginning of each chapter doesn't have any prerequisites. So you can jump to the beginning of any chapter in the book and get started from there, uh, but you can't jump to the middle of a chapter. So I can't just jump to five, uh, 1 1.5. I have to do that chapter in order and get a minimum of 50% to be able to open the next one. Now, when you get a minimum of 50%, so let's say, for example, today I get started on my homework and I finish 1.1 and I get a 60% and there's some questions I just didn't know, that's why I didn't get 100%, I can move forward. I've done at least half of it, so I can move forward to the next section, that way I don't get stuck, and I can do some more work on that one. 
And then when you uh, when you maybe see a tutor or you come to my office hour or maybe the next day in class, whatever, now you're ready to go back to the previous homework assignment, you can always go back to it and pick up where you left off. So um, it, it's not like once you move on to the next assignment, the previous one is frozen in place or anything. So you can always uh, go back and continue to improve your score um, all the way up until the due date. Uh, were there any questions about that? No? Now the due dates are on here to the left, so you gotta keep track of those. And those will change a little bit as the semester progresses. Uh, but basically the chapters that we will be tested on are gonna be due the night before that test. So test number one is gonna cover the first four chapters in this, this semester. So that means that the first four chapters worth the homework and their corresponding quizzes will all be due the night before that first test. Okay, that's how they be, that's how they connected. Okay, so you do all your homework, you do chapter one, for instance, 1.1, a minimum of 50%, then you could do 1.2, minimum of 50%, and then move on. So maybe you've gone all the way through and completed a minimum of 50% for all of the, uh, of the homework in chapter one. Once you've done that, it'll allow you to open the quiz for chapter one. Each chapter has a corresponding quiz. Uh, so how do you see the quizzes? Well, there's two ways. Over here, there's the little link that said homework. Right underneath it, there's a little link that says quizzes and tests. So you can click that and you can see the uh, all the quizzes right on there. Another way to do it is that they're both kind of connected by this guy up here. So you can select homework, you can select quizzes, and I like to select this, all assignments. I like to see them all at the same time. It just makes it nicer for me, I think. Uh, so when you hit all assignments, you see all of chapter one, 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 two, one, three, one, four, one, five, one, six, and then chapter one quiz. And then you see two, one, two, 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 three, and then chapter two quiz. So I prefer to see the all assignments tab up here. Any rate, so you finish all your homework from chapter one with a minimum of 50%, then you can open your quiz. When you open your quiz, it'll be a random selection of a few questions from the homework. So the homework assignments are made to be long. There's a lot of questions on them. You're gonna spend uh, several hours, many hours on each one of these, that's, that's expected. The quizzes, the intention is for them to be kind of short, like maybe less than half an hour worth of questions. Having said that, now some questions are kind of inherently long and some questions are kind of short. So uh, in chapter one, there's a lot of vocabulary, maybe 10 questions will be selected and you should be able to answer those fairly quickly, definitely in less than half an hour. Uh, maybe down the road where the questions get kind of long and intricate, maybe your quiz might only be two questions uh, because they take a long time to do each of those two questions. But, but it'll be a random selection of those. Now in the quizzes, you cannot um, take multiple attempts. You type in a question, it'll, you submit it, it'll say it's right or it's wrong and you're done. Uh, you're not allowed to change your, your submission. Okay, so it'll randomly select a few questions, you try and answer them, you submit it, it'll give you a grade, and that grade is frozen, okay? Now, if the due date is not past due yet, then you can select to retake a quiz. When you retake a quiz, it'll randomly select a brand new choice of questions that were nothing like the previous quiz. And again, you attempt your answers and submit it and get a score, It'll, the system will keep the best score that you get throughout, throughout all of your attempts. So it'll keep the best score possible. But there's just a slight difference, right? So with the homework, you were allowed to reattempt the same question over and over again. With the quizzes, you're allowed to reattempt the quiz, which will be a brand new selection of questions separate from the questions in the first attempt. Okay, does that make sense? Are there any questions about the quizzes now? Yes. Unlimited number of attempts up to the due date. So once the due date is come past, then you're not allowed to take any more quizzes. So that's why it's also nice for you to try and finish your homework early as, as early as possible, because it's the sooner you finish your homework, the sooner you can open up your quiz and begin taking attempts. So that, hey, maybe that first quiz you took was, uh, you know, these questions were kind of hard, I didn't do that well. You know, you can just kind of uh, try it again, try a different quiz and it'll keep your best score, the whichever was your best score is the one that it'll keep.
Other questions about the quizzes or the homework at this point? No? No? We're good? Good, 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 good. Okay, so those are the only two things that will affect your grade in here. Uh, you have to do your quizzes and you have to do your homework. There's a bunch of other stuff on here that is useful and helpful, uh, but it does not affect your grade. Uh, in particular, if you go over to quizzes, notice that all the quizzes for me say Math 150 on them. Uh, those are the ones I created. Your author also created a bunch of quizzes and tests. They're down here. These are optional. They're, they don't affect your grade. If you want to try them out and see how you do with them, great, but they don't affect your grade. Only the ones, only the quizzes that begin with Math 150 are uh, affect your grade. And the homework, and all the homeworks begin with homework, you know, begin with this, chapter or something. So you got to go over here where it says homework, and then they'll be listed on there.